Welcome everyone to Dragon Star Wrestling! I am RG and beside me is the Dragon Star Wrestling Champion, Douglas Mitchell. 22 time! We are just one show away from the pay-per-view, the Belly of the Beast, where the Elimination Chamber is the talk of the town. Oh shit it is! Douglas versus the main event winner tonight is the talk of the town. You know, the one that I'm gonna beat defending my world championship? I guess it can't be denied, but tonight has a lot of influence of what can take place at Belly of the Beast. Tonight we have a long shot battle royal. I gotta read this shit? <sighs> By whatever do you mean, RG? I'm glad you asked, Douglas. Tonight, the men and women will have a long shot battle royal where the participants are wrestlers that are currently just starting or might not have any shot of getting a title shot anytime soon. The, lot of, the excuse me, the long shot battle royale. Interesting. Something the WWE will never do. And that, my friend, is a fact. And the women's long shot begins after these words from AR Price and Company. Exploit your passion. Great words by a man that is making America great again and a great friend. What's my passion? Money. And lots of it. But even though I'm the richest man alive, I still feel like I don't have enough. That's why I must have the DSW Championship and all the fame and fortune that comes with it. The Dark Renegade is the only one standing in my way from a championship match against Douglas. He's strong. He's muscular. But you know what he's not? Me. And don't think I haven't forgotten about you, Mr. American. Mex American, whatever your name is. My boys here, the Bradley Guns, are calling you out. Tell them, Bradley. The Mex American. The so called icon of the people. Well, newsflash icon. No one has defended you yet. The spot. He's a human target, and you're looking at sharpshooters. It's too bad the long shot battle royale isn't happening on the next show because after tonight, Mex American, your losing streak continues when you are beat by military trained badass. The following match is a men's singles match scheduled for one fall. First, approaching the ring. From Seattle, Washington, he is the roadie, Adam Hammer. Interesting fact about Adam Hammer, he was asked to be in the long shot battle royal, but he declined. He said that he needed to get better in the ring, so someone else should have the opportunity. Very selfless. That's your opinion, RG. And we both know that mine is the only one worth a damn. Hammer knows that if he won the battle royale, he would lose in record-breaking time. But beyond that, can we even call him a roadie anymore if he's a wrestler? I think he uses it to sound more important than he is. That's not selfless. That's stupid. No one turns down a shot to be champ. No one. His opponent from Kirk County, Wyoming. He is Father May I. As a minister with his own television show, so far Father May I has successfully gone undefeated in singles competition. You know, I'm inclined to believe the man of faith, particularly this one. He's just oozing holes of holiness, excuse me. Oh, win or lose, this man is truly blessed. And I gotta give it to him. For somebody that's a man of the faith, he sure does a good job in the ring. We kick off the evening with the singles match between the roadie, Adam Hammer, versus the religious one, Father May I. May I has displayed that he is capable of winning matches. So far, he is undefeated in singles competition. Father May I is very dedicated. 
You don't need to have a degree to be a pastor. But man, I did it anyway, showing his dedication to his holy craft, whereas Adam Hammer is the complete opposite. A complete idiot that did nothing with his life but follow bands around lugging their instruments from point A to point B. Sure, he gained muscles doing it, but how long can you dedicate your life to being someone's bellhop? Did you say bellhop? What's a bellhop? Pinfall, one, two, oh no, only one fall. A bellhop is one of them guys at the hotels that takes your luggage. I've never used one of those. Well, you're lower class, RG. You never experienced that. All right, well, I, I guess you're, uh, you're not lying. Uh, Hammer has yet to accumulate any wins in the singles division. And I don't know if he's going to get one here tonight. The only way I can see that happening is if Father May I had a Ned Flanders moment and had to help someone in a crisis overnight. Otherwise, Father May I has really taken the wrestling rather well. He has, but he seems to be having a little bit of difficulty tonight. Well, that goes back to that Ned Flanders comment that I made. You know, that one, that, that one soul that always has problems, so he goes to seek help from the pastor 24, hour, uh, 24 hours a day. Yeah, I think I saw that episode of The Simpsons. Well, Brett, that's what happened to Father May I. It could be, because Adam Hammer is on point tonight, taking, uh, addition it out to uh, Father May I. Oh, what the hell, Hammer? He, he just pounded on Father May I. How dare he do that? He's he's going to hell. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, Douglas. Yeah, but you can't beat up a man of the cloth like that. One, two. Well, if he can't beat up a man of the cloth, then he shouldn't have been a wrestler. Yeah, but Hammer's playing dirty. Another pinfall. One. You see that? He had his hand on his face. Just shoving it down. Come on, may I? Oh, may I keep dishing it and doesn't dish back. He must be really tired. Hammer picks him up. Close line from hell. That's blasphemous. He's definitely going to hell. Two and three. The winner of this match by way of pinfall, Adam Hammer. Maybe it was a wise move for Adam Hammer to uh, pass up the uh, long shot match uh, later this evening because he finally got his first win. Yeah, well, so, something was off with uh, Father Mayo. Maybe Adam Hammer sold his soul to the devil. I don't think that's the case. I think Adam Hammer just had a really good night. Mayo couldn't get a single bit of offense on uh, Adam Hammer. Yeah, well, there's always next time. Father Mayo. Had an off night. The next time, he'll get the best of Adam Hammer. No doubt about it. Don't forget, later this evening, we got AR Price versus the Dark Renegade to become the number one contender that will compete against Douglas for the World Heavyweight Championship. I can't wait for that. Right now, we got Big Daddy T standing by with some words for DJ B. Brand. So the big dance of wannabe wants a piece of tea. Boy, you better think twice about you, what you're asking for. Try talking shit about Miami in the neighborhood. Jumps like you go missing every day for saying something stupid. But seeing as how you're one stubborn piece of shit, I'm going to accept your little powwow. But boy, when I'm done with you, not even your mama going to recognize you. The following match is a women's long shot battle royale match. The first entrant in this match, making her way to the ring from Louisville, Kentucky. This is Granny Dearest. She's not the strongest woman on the roster, but the most tenured in professional wrestling who is not looking to give up her career anytime soon. She's a fighter, RG. Whether she looks like it or not, she has a lot of tenure in the wrestling world. She would put the fabulous Moolah to shame today if she wrestled Moolah in her prime. I think I just picked my winner right here. Granny Dearest, she can win. Check this out. Oldest woman in the roster indeed, but uh, she has yet to get injured, so uh, we'll see what she brings to the match. She'll bring it all. Next, 
from Belfast, Ireland. This is Four Leaf. Four Leaf is definitely someone that has not had the best of luck in the ring. While she may have beaten Granny Dearest, she has still had quite a bit of trouble standing out. And in order to stand out, you gotta win. I've been waiting for her to get arrested for assaulting that, that, that elderly woman. And uh, I'm speaking of Granny Dearest. With uh, her luck, it could happen. But if her luck runs it's in reverse, then uh, she could end up winning this match. The next long shot from Mexico City, Mexico. She is Calavera. The beautiful seductress from the dead, Calavera has appeased the eyes of many viewers but has nothing to show for. So far, she has yet to win a single match. A long shot by any definition, but sweet candy to my eye. That's a sexist statement. When did it become wrong to compliment a woman? So I use adjectives. This woman is hot, RG. If I can't use a simple metaphor to get my point across, then the United States might as well revert back to baby talk because women love compliments. If they say they don't, they're lying. Otherwise, they wouldn't dress up, they wouldn't wear those long black dresses with long sleeves that show nothing. And their opponent, from the nation of Canada, she is Silver Fox. Like Granny Dearest, Silver Fox has some age behind her, but continues to push forward the goal of one day becoming the women's champion. It's a dream many wrestlers have. Unless you're blessed like me, only the select few will ever get close enough to touch it. Only 1% of them will ever wear it. Silver Fox is not one of those women. Sure, she is uh, able to do a move here and there, but she looks like a woman that never left the Jazzercise era. Fox is living a pop dream that will never come to pass. She's not a long shot, she's a no shot. And their opponent is from Charlotte, North Carolina. She is the All-American. Newest acquisition to the DSW universe has arrived. She is the All-American. She grew up with a love for the red, white, and blue, and regardless of the situation with the world today, she still has optimism for the United States will bounce back stronger than ever. I know nothing of this girl, whether she can wrestle, her finishing move, or even if she's a legal age to work in the wrestling industry. Of course she is, Douglas. I don't know that. The people at home don't know that. Just because you plaster your nation's colors all over doesn't make you A, a wrestler, or B, old enough to work. She's gonna have to show what she's got. And their opponent, she is one half of the Sriracha Girls. She is Amy Rodriguez. Amy Rodriguez is getting her first shot at singles action. Well, I really wouldn't call this singles action, but she's getting her first shot in a solo competition to compete for a shot at going into the Elimination Chamber. I'm gonna give her a compliment, RG. All right, she's hot, she's beautiful, and she's one hell of a wrestler. I mean, she, she may not have many wins, but I mean, I enjoy watching her, and I enjoy Sriracha Beer. Oh yeah. Taste the flavor. Welcome to you are just joining us. You are watching the very first long shot battle royale in wrestling history, where one of these competitors, excuse me, will go on to compete in the women's elimination chamber match for a shot at becoming the number one contender for the women's DSW championship belt. Granny on the outside and she punches her way back in. The only way to win is by throwing your opponents. Oh, we just had an elimination. Silver Fox is the first to be eliminated. What I tell you, no shot, not a chance. Every one of these women have an opportunity to become the number one contender. I love it, RG, because normally, even in WWE, maybe not even AEW, 
Well, maybe uh, AEW. But uh, normally you wouldn't see this. WWE ain't going to give this to you. Amy Rodriguez holding on. And so is uh, Calavera. Uh oh, Calavera almost got taken out. And she's back in. Yeah, take it to that freak American. Douglas is speaking of Amy Rodriguez and uh, Grady Dearest double teaming the newcomer, All American. Uh oh, four leaf on the outside of the ring. Calavera is trying to take her out. Can't she knock her off? No. Four leaf is right back in. Who do you think is going to be the next to be el eliminated, Douglas? I think Four Leaf is going to be the next to go. She might be. She's up on the top. Amy Rodriguez is as well. Who's going to drop? Either one of these and Granny Dearest is just watching on. Oh, Four Leaf is eliminated. It's Four Leaf is eliminated, not a lemma, a lemma, whatever you said, RG. But I was right, see? Four Leaf didn't have a shot in hell winning this match. We are suddenly down to four com uh, com competitors. One of these women will go on to be one of the competitors in the Elimination Chamber. Could it be Amy Rodriguez? No! She is eliminated! That ain't fair. No! She got screwed! The All-American has had one hell of a show in here tonight in her debut. Well, no, not, uh, not really a debut. She's had a match on uh, Nuclear Night. Well, I didn't see it, so it didn't count. Well, you're not a part of Patreon. We're suddenly down to three. Granny Dearest, the All-American, and Calavera. Granny hanging for her dear life. Oh, wow. I told you, she might be old, but she can still move. Granny sitting back. Oh, she takes a shot at Calavera. And now the All-American fights out of the corner. But Calavera from behind. She throws All-American over. Granny taking a breather. Calavera, can she eliminate? No. The All-American fights her way back in. Now Granny's taking a shot at both. All-American from behind. She throws Granny over. Now Calavera has All-American. All-American thrown into the corner. You see Calavera is a little worn down. You see that, RG? They just switched and switched positions. <laughs> that was pretty good. Now Calavera barely holding on. She's on the side of the apron. The All-American picks her up and kicks her right off. Damn. I hate to see you go, but I love to watch her leave. Sexist statement. I just think women are beautiful, RG. That's all. You don't think women are beautiful? That's not what I said. All-American now has Granny Dearest hanging on for dear life. Can Granny hold on? Granny is up and over! No, no, that's messed up! Mm -mm. The All American came into this match, the newcomer, and walks out, going in to the Elimination Chamber. That's messed up, Archie. She shouldn't have even got this shot, should have gone to someone else. But it didn't, and she ended up walking in here. And MLM, uh, uh, God, eliminating many women to become one of the entrants in the Elimination Chamber for a shot at the World Heavyweight Champion. Wait, is that right? No, the Elimination Chamber is for a number one contender. Yeah, just making sure you're paying attention. Whatever. We got Violet Lovecraft with words for Tyga. Oh, hello. How's your die going? As you can see, mine is going fab you left. I'm at the beach all to myself catching some glorious sun. What could be better? Oh, I forgot. We haven't met yet. The world knows me as Violet Lovecraft. You will know me as the woman that will beat Tiger to become the woman's champion. Am I worried? What do you think? I would like to extend get well wishes to the purple puma for walking into my high fashion kick. I mean, I, I wasn't even trying to hurt her, but it happened, and here I am, one step closer to my glorious world championship. Let me put it in words and understand, Tiger. 
Their little streak is finished and after I'm basking in the glow of my championship belt, you'll be nothing more than an afterthought licking her wounds like an abused little kitty. Now, leave me be. I have radiant skin to attend to. The following match is a men's long shot battle royale challenge where the winner will be an entrant in the elimination chamber at Belly of the Beast. First, from Chinatown, New York, he is Chien Sakamoto. It's something that has been left out of the previous comments and it's the fact that Chien Sakamoto is blind, but yet he still holds a win against Bradley Gunn. Which Bradley Gunn? The one with two ends. Well, I'm sure face paint got in his eyes that day, but Sakadoto is indeed a long shot. He won't win, but let's thank him now for being a contestant. Thanks for nothing. The following entrant hails from Tampa Bay, Florida. He is King DDT. A former two-time champion and had an average position on the upper tier of the rankings, but this time around hasn't been so kind to the King. DDT, uh, excuse me, DDT has yet to get a single win. I told you he was no king. Definitely no king of mine. This choke has bases abilities around one move. Who does that? A long shot, yes, he is. Does he stand a chance? Probably not as much as Sakadoto. It is true that King DDT has fallen off the ranks. Fallen off? He glyph dived. He jumped right into that empty abyss. I don't think he stands a chance in this match at all. Based on his record lately, <clears throat> he ain't winning this. The next entrant comes from Boston, Massachusetts. He is Flippin' Floyd Farnsworth. He's grown on me, Archie. Flippin' Floyd. <laughs> He's grown on you. Okay. Flippin' Floyd made his debut on Nuclear Night <laughs> not too long ago. While he does do a lot of flips, none of them have helped him win a single match. Well, you can do all the flips you want till the cows come home. But flipping and flying does not hurt someone, especially when someone is standing here waiting to catch you. Right, WWE, AEW? He looks like he thinks he's big shit, but if he doesn't wrestle more than flip, he'll be nothing more than a corn that just in that little piece of shit that can't be just digested. The following entrant from the sewers of New York, he is the Laughing Rat! Laughing Rat made his debut on the last episode of Nuclear Night. Little is known about him, but the one thing that sticks out on your mind is that that smile that never quits. He's tall and strong, but he also has speed, which is a triple threat in professional wrestling. There aren't too many guys out there that have all three. He might be new, but I would watch out for him. As far as this match is concerned, he will be the first target of elimination. Much like when the Big Show shows up in a Royal Rumble, everybody goes after him. Is that what you mean, Douglas? Exactly, Mundo. This guy is going to eliminate so many people, and he'll do it with ease, too. That's why he's going to be the target of attack. So Laughing Rat is going to try to eliminate as many as he can, as quickly as he can, so he can get out of this match and go celebrate. How do you think a guy from the sewer celebrates? Beer. And lots of it. Oh. And hookers. And their opponent, from Venice Beach, California, he is the Oh Yeah Kid. 
I wouldn't consider him the sharpest wrestler, but speed, he has plenty of. Speed, yeah. Used for running away, which he's probably done his whole life. I see him throwing himself out, over the top, and out of the ring. I think this is the most words we've gotten in on this uh, intro. Yeah, well, his time in the ring is going to be less than this intro. Just watch. This is the final entrant from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It is TGT. TGT is the latest acquisition to the Dragon Star universe. He has the speed of Randy Orton and the cunning of CM Punk. Does that mean he complains like both of them? I don't know what to think of him yet. This is the first time I've seen him, and while his attire has low life Orange Cassidy written all over him, he might be the next big thing. My pick for winning this match is TGT. Wow, really? You picked TGT? Of all the guys you've seen coming to this match, TGT is your choice. That's the first, ladies and gentlemen. What, Archie? You don't think I can pick a winner? Well, yeah, you get something right every now and then. Well, TNT is my choice to win. That is, he wins this competition for getting eliminated first. That's what he wins at. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I should have really guessed. You didn't see that one coming. And I guarantee you, TGT is not going to watch, he's not going to see when he gets his ass thrown over the top and his face is face first onto the floor. Watch. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The second long shot men's tournament, uh, excuse me, uh, over the top battle royal. Uh, much like the women's, these men are also competing for the opportunity to skyrocket their career by winning this match and getting entered into the Elimination Chamber at Belly of the Beast to compete against the Dragon Star Champion that could either be Douglas or the winner of tonight's main event, the Dark Renegade versus A.R. Price. There is no doubt that I will win, but it goes to be a, uh, it's, it's gonna be a hard fought match. There are six men in the ring. Of the six, who do you think will move on to the Belly of the Beast? I think it ends in double elimination and no one wins. Okay, let me ask you a different question. If one of these men were to win the Battle Royale, who would it be? If I had to choose, it would be the Laughing Rat. He looks crazy, and crazy means you don't trust anyone. And that's the best thing you can do in a Battle Royale. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin said, DTA, don't trust anyone. That is the smartest strategy going into these battle royales. And we've seen time and time again, friends making friends. We get uh, friends making enemies by turning on uh, on each other. We've seen tag team partners turn on each other because of the situation. Uh-oh, Sakamoto has been eliminated. What I tell you, Sakamoto did not stand a chance. He didn't see that coming. <laughs> That's messed up because he's blind and all. That's messed up. That just O. O is right. TGT just eliminated the Oh Yeah Kid. He's eliminated two people so far. Farnsworth's going to get him right here. Watch. Come on, Farnsworth. Nope, TGT forearms him. Laughing Rat is, is uh, hanging on. DDT has him hanging over. Will Laughing Rat be eliminated? Drop kick over. No, he lands on the corner of the apron. And Laughing Rat is right back in. Uh oh, TGT has has uh, Farnsworth on the corner on the edge and he eliminates him. TGT has eliminated three superstars in this match. We are down to three superstars left. Excuse me. You know what these matches are good at? Uh, uh, what they're good for, RG? What's that, Douglas? Stumbling over our own words. I mean, I, I I'm not even saying some stuff right. So much action is taking place like that right there. And I mess up constantly. I mean, you hear it all the time when we're rumbles. That's true. It's hard to focus on one bit of action that's going on. But now we are down to a triple threat. 
The laughing rat is thrown over. Now TGT turns to, turns to face DDT. He catches DDT. Dragon screw takes DDT right down. Laughing rat stomping away at DDT. Now it looks like TGT and DDT are double teaming. Excuse me. Laughing rat and TGT are double teaming DDT. What the hell did you just say, RG? I didn't understand a word you said. It's that action. DDT, kick to the face of TGT. Elbow drop misses. TGT's right back up. TGT throws him over. Kick to the midsection. And he's got him. DDT powers out. He's thrown right back over. TGT. No, Laughing Rat. He's trying to shove him off. That huge body of Laughing Rat. Can he eliminate DDT? He does it. We are down to two. The Laughing Rat and TGT. Only one of these men will go on to the Elimination Chamber match. Who will it be? Atomic Drop. Elbow to the head. This is the Laughing Rat's match. He's going to eliminate TGT right here. You know what TGT stands for, Archie? What's that, Douglas? Thanks for going through this ass beating. I'm about to give you. <laughs> Well, TGT just throw Laughing Rat over. He's telling him to come back in. TGT has shown that he is capable of, uh, of uh, dominating Royal Rumbles. Yeah, but now we're down to one on one here. TGT on Laughing Rat. Laughing Rat is down. Give him a minute. He, he'll come back. TGT with a punch. And now he's got him on the ropes. Can he get him? Can he eliminate him? No, I don't think he will. He's got him leaning so far over in a drop kick. No, he lands on the edge of the apron. Now it's Laughing Rat's turn, RG. He's throwing him to the ropes and watch. Now it's as beaten city. This is what I've noticed so far between these two is that TGT will wear down his opponents gradually, whereas Laughing Rat has yet to almost eliminating TGT, TGT right back in. Laughing Rat is barely doing any damage to TGT. Instead, he's going for the elimination. When you're as big as Laughing Rat, you can do whatever you want and easily throw your opponent over. But TGT showing that upper strength, holding on for dear life. He has almost been eliminated twice. And look, <laughs> TGT cannot believe that he, he uh, still <laughs> remained in, that, in the ring. But the tables are turned now. And oh he no, eliminates the Laughing no, Rat. No. I can't believe this. The winner of the men's long shot battle royale, TGT. You can't deny the fact that TGT came into this match and completely dominated his opponents, eliminating what, five? Yeah, whatever, RG. TGT. He's a chunk. He ain't gonna win the Elimination Chamber, I'll tell you that. He might have made it, he ain't gonna win it. That remains to be seen as TGT has shown that he is capable of withstanding a Battle Royale. But, how will he fare in the Elimination Chamber against five other opponents when you don't know what position he is gonna be entered into the Elimination Chamber? I hope it gets his face busted open at the Elimination Chamber. He never been in it before. He's gonna get an ass beat. Just watch. Who get what he's got coming to him. The following match is a women's singles competition scheduled for one fall. First, from Hell's Kitchen, New York, she is Mad Maxine. Another new acquisition to the DSW Women's Division. She has grown up on the bad streets of New York where violence is rampant and the only one that will look out for an individual is themselves. But could the numbers game cause Maxine to, uh, a successful debut? She looks like a capable superstar that can, uh, that can defend herself, RG. 
I mean, she, you said it her, yourself that she grew up on the streets of New York, of, of Hell's Kitchen. That's where she's from. But that means she, she had to learn to brawl. She had to learn to fight. And uh, multiple people at the same time. So, uh, can, she, can she defend herself? She can. And uh, she'll, she'll, she'll definitely have to prove it. But, uh, yeah. I don't know where that was going, but okay. Uh, Mad Maxine, everybody, getting her debut here on Dragon Star Wrestling. Just that Royal Rumble, aren't she? Messed me up. And her opponent, she is one half of the tag team Sriracha Girls. She is Jackie Jade. In the words of Stone Cold Steve Austin, oh hell yeah. This will be the first time we get to see Jackie Jade in singles action. But uh, can we consider it a one-on-one -on -one match? Is there a chance that Emmy Rodriguez might make an appearance here tonight? That's a pretty dumb question, Archie. Emmy Rodriguez has every right to be here. Sure, they may not be a close to... Uh, this might not be a tag team match, but uh, they can still support each other like a, like a manager supporting their client. But this is Jackie Jade's moment. I don't think Amy Rodriguez is going to do anything to compromise that. Jackie Jade's first singles match against the newcomer Mad Maxine. Jade, a former swimsuit model turned spokeswoman for the now famous Sriracha Beer against the street smart, street wise Mad Maxine. One, feet on the ropes. It's always fun to watch the Sriracha girls, even if it's half of them, but I'm interested in the new woman here, Mad Maxine. She grew up in the streets of a bad area of New York where she learned to brawl. That tells me she's been in a fight or two and won't back down. Is streetball experience equal to in-ring experience? Sometimes. It depends where you're at. What do you mean? Your brawler's place is where they can do the most damage. Outside the ring. They might be able to do some... Oh. I knew it. Amy Rodriguez could not stand by. She is now here in the side of the ring as a distraction. Look, Maxine's trying to cheat. She's trying to pull something. Amy Rodriguez doing a job trying to... A distract the ref and the ref has just ejected Amy Rodriguez she just came out here and now she's ejected all she's trying to do was trying to get Matt and Maxine trying to get the ref to see that Matt and Maxine had some brass knuckles in her tights that's all she was trying to do and what you get for that she got thrown out of the ring what the hell it's a one-sided ref well we won't be seeing Amy Rodriguez once uh in, in, <laughs> we won't be seeing her again. Best up, Archie. But Jackie Jade is doing pretty well for herself. From behind. No, takedown. Followed by an elbow drop to the leg. Well, anyways, like I was saying, a brawler's place is where they can do the most damage, which is outside the ring. They might be able to do some damage in the ring, but they're more lethal outside. If I were Jade, I would stay in the ring as much as possible. Well, so far, Mad Maxine hasn't needed it. She's doing pretty well standing up on her own. She leaps over the top. She's going to go. She flies. Elbow off the top. Hook of the leg. One, two, and oh. Little hesitation by the ref. No hesitation there. Jane got her shoulders up, but at the same time, she kicked out. I mean, you saw what you saw. I saw what I saw. Calling me a liar, RG? No, I didn't say he lied. I just say you saw what you saw. But so far in this match, I've seen a ref that eliminated the support of Jackie Jade. One, two, near fall. And then the ref stopped on a three count. Jade shoves Max. Kick to the midsection. Uh-oh. The arm's pumped. Pedigree. She ain't moving. Hook of the leg. One, two, and three. The winner of the match by way of pinfall, Mad Maxine.
in her debut, Mad Maxi gets her first win against Jackie Jade, who also had her first match, but it wasn't didn't go so well for her. I mean, as much as I wanted Jackie Jade to win, I'll be right back. And I'm not disappointed in this because I want to see what Mad Maxine has to offer the DSW universe. She's a brawler, she's a fighter, and that's what I am. I mean, I'm a, I'm a mat technician, but I'm also a fighter. I love to fight. And so does Mad Maxine. Renegade, Renegade, a word. What's your strategy against AR Price tonight? Renegade? Hey, Renegade. Huh. Okay. Whew, made it back in time. So many of you, RG. The following match is a men's singles competition match scheduled for one fall. First, he coming to the ring, but with a spot. From San Antonio, Texas, he is the Mix American. You would bring someone to interfere in this match. Once a cheater, always a cheater. This is a match the Mexican American has been looking forward to, but it's not the one he really wants, a match with A.R. Price. He needs to get over it. A.R. Price is a busy man. He needs to pay attention to what's coming at him, because if the Mutz American doesn't, he's gonna get a militant beating in a Special Forces way. And his opponent, being accompanied by Bradley Gunn from Washington, D.C. This is Bradley Gunn! These two have created a blockade between Mex American and AR Price, causing the Mex American more anguish in his pursuit to get even with AR Price. The Mex American should just let it go. The guns are hired for one purpose, and that's to provide a line of defense so AR can focus on obtaining the World Championship belt. And even if they've lost matches, they've been successful in getting their jobs done. That's a win in their books. They get paid to do a job, and they do it. Plain and simple. Mex American darts right out of the corner to try and get at the Bradley Gun, who is stopping him from getting his hands on AR Price. No, no, no. You got it the other way around, Archie. The guns are the good guys in this whole situation. You make it sound like the Me Mex American is the good guy. He's not. He's the one trying to go after AR Price. Mex American can't let it go. So he's trying to get revenge. Revenge is a bad guy's move, RG. That makes no sense. It makes complete sense. If the Mex American were a babyface, he wouldn't want revenge. But he was attacked with a chair. How is someone supposed to act when they're hit by a chair in, in the match? They're just supposed to turn the other cheek? Are they supposed to be like Kenny Omega when he gets beard poured all over him? He's just going to stand there and like, Hey, why would you do that? I'm going to give it to you. That's a pretty good impression of Kenny Omega. Uh, I wouldn't, but for someone calling themselves the icon of the people, you would think they would be a bigger man. So why did Bradley Gunn bring Bradley Gunn? Protection. Why didn't Mex American bring the spot? It's only fair. Okay, so how do you tell the guns apart, Douglas? It's only obvious, RG. One of them has two ends in the name, gun, and uh, the one at uh, ringside has one end. Wait, the fact that one is black and the other is white doesn't tell you anything? I don't see you black and white, RG. That's really messed up. I... Uh, forget it. Well, up next, we got A.R. Price versus Dark Renegade in the main event of the evening. One of them will go on to be the number one contender for Douglas's World Heavyweight Championship. I've said it time and time again all night, and I can't wait for that match because I'm going to see who I get to beat at Bell of the Beast. And it's been a long road. We've gone from, uh, from uh, I don't know how many men, what, eight men, 16, I forget. But we are now down to the two. And to be honest, it has kind of helped us determine the rankings for the DSW ranking system, uh, which is done separately. Uh, similar to AEW's, but AEW really doesn't pay attention to theirs. Eric, why does the number five rank in Darby Allen get a shot at the World Heavyweight Championship? That's stupid. I mean, if they said they're basing their whole system around this ranking system, 
They give Darby Allen a shot, who was injured and just came back. That's dope. Well, Dragon, the owner of the stream, said that he did apply for AEW, and he's gotten no word. He sent them pictures. He sent them simple scri sample scripts, and uh, he's gotten no word, which is pretty interesting. Uh, he does a pretty good job in putting this all together. Yep, if you ask me, Dragon is pretty close to God. I wouldn't go that far. Well, Bradley Gunn with uh, two ends is taken to the Mex-American. So far, we have not had Bradley Gunn with one end and uh, the spot interfere in this match. It's just a matter of time before the spot sticks his nose where it doesn't belong. Or it could be Gunn sticks his nose where it doesn't belong and causing the spot to react. Oh, the ref almost getting taken out there. Monkey flip. Mexican American looking very calm. A little disorientation there. Allowing Bradley Gunn to get the upper hand. Goes behind. Elbow to the back of the head. Kick to the midsection. Mexican American says no. He begins assaulting right back. And lock. Close line. Takes him right down. That's the specialist. Or that's the special forces in Bradley Gunn right there. Taking two. He knows how to uh, counterattack and then focus on the parts of the body that will hurt the Mex American. But the Mex American is reversing right back. Going to work on the arm, the unpadded area. Uh oh. He's got him. Uh oh. He's spinning him around and he lets him go. He ripped the, that off from the Swedish Superman. And he couldn't even do it as long as uh, uh, Cesaro does. What a chip to all the fans at home. They wanted to see him spin longer. I didn't. There you go. Reversal by Gun into a DDT. Axe handle to the face. He picks up Mex American. Scoop, slam. Yes. Successful in that. And he kicks him. Mex American gets up. Very upset. Close line. Another. Missing with the clothesline. Just a wall backbreaker on Bradley Gunn. Will he go for the pin? He does. Hook of the leg and Bradley Gunn is on ring. He's on the apron. Distracting the ref. That could have been a three count. Flayed form. Hook of the leg. But the ref is distracted. You missed it, RG. I saw the spot try to get up there. So Bradley Gunn was trying to do, uh, try, trying to get the ref to pay attention. Mix American is hulking out. Puts to the midsection. He scoops him up. Reverse DDT position. Got him up. Oh! The kick, uh, excuse me, the tequila driver. And Bradley Gunn is on the apron once again. Distracting the ref. Gee, the spot did it again. I saw him, and the ref isn't even looking that way. The ref is one-sided. He only looks for the Mexican American side. That's messed up. See, he ain't even counting for Bradley. This is a three count right there. No, the ref took the time to count outside the ring. Yeah, but he's trying to focus on what Bradley Gunn wasn't doing outside the ring. He jumped up on the apron and stopped the count twice. You're blind, RG. That's not what happened. You didn't even call him the spot on his head. You, you one-sided too. That's messed up. You're supposed to be the GM of this whole show and you're only looking at one side of the spectrum. Monkey flip by the Mexican American. Molds him over on the back. Stop on the arm. Hook of the leg. And there he is, Bradley Gunn on the apron once again. You didn't, you didn't even say anything about the spot. God, I, I can't believe you, RG. You missed it. The, the spot was going for some weapons. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's doing. Well, news for you, RG. Bradley Gunn is giving it to Max American right here. Watch. It's all over. Military press. Got him up. Pile up. Excuse me. Power bomb into a Canadian destroyer. No, it wasn't the Canadian Destroyer. It was a Styles Clash, RG. Yeah, that move. Got him up. Suplex. Mex-American 
Managed to power out, but he gets raked to the eyes by Bradley Gunn. Blind or not, he still stays on the offense. See the crowd starting to boo at Rex American for the amount of times he's been cheating. He's cheating now, he cheated at the very beginning, and the spots cheated. This is all one-sided. Is that how it's gonna be at my match, Archie? Is that how it's gonna be? That's messed up. You ain't even gonna give me a fair title defense, are you? It's as fair as all the other matches, Douglas. Look, the spot, the spot. The spot was on the apron. And now, and now he, he, he's attacking. He's attacking Bradley Gunn. But what does the ref do? He calls on Bradley Gunn. He doesn't call on the spot for attacking Bradley Gunn while the Mexican American had him in that move. I didn't see it. You didn't see it because you're too blind, Archie. And Bradley Gunn up on the apron again, and the ref is having words with Bradley Gunn. I'm getting tired of this, Archie. I'm getting tired of this. Well, it looks like Bradley Gunn with one end has finally been expelled from the match. Yeah, it's making me sick. Total bullshit. Like I said, you see it your way, I see it mine. And so far, the Mexican American has done everything he could to put away Bradley Gunn, but every single time he does, Bradley Gunn with one in is there to interrupt the match. Now he gets him with the flying forearm and a hook of the leg. One, two, and the shoulders up. But he's not done. Punch to the midsection. Reverse. Got him up. The tequila drop. Hook of the leg. One, two, and three. The winner of this match by way of pinfall, the Mex American. The Mex American finally gets one Bradley Gunn out of the way, beating him in his own game. Granted, Bradley Gunn with one in interfered many times, so it gave Bradley Gunn with two ends the opportunity to capitalize, which Mex American managed to uh, capitalize on uh, the situations. I ain't say nothing. This is, this is a sham. Crap. Dog shit. And who's this? She's climbing in the ring. She's she nice. Looks like she's helping Bradley Gunn. Yeah. And she's in, oh no! Ooh, the oh! Bread basket. Kick to the balls. I'm backstage with the Mex American who just had a successful win against Bradley Gunn with two ends. Mex. With this win, you still have the other Bradley Gunn that stands in your way of AR Price. You said you have a plan to get an AR Price. Was the woman a part of the plan? Maybe she was. Maybe she was. So no, I can't give away that kind of information. As soon as I get to. I challenge the other Bradley Gunn. The one with one in. See, si, one in. I challenge you, Bradley Gunn. To a match at Belly of the Beast. Solo tu y yo, nadie más. Ain't too tough now, huh? Take that. Challenge accepted. Should have seen that coming, man. Come on, you, you get up, get up. You should have, you should have given him a cross chop. Damn, maybe beat the shit out of you. The following match is a men's championship tournament final where the winner will be declared the number one contender for the world championship at Belly of the Beast. First approaching the ring from Louisville, Kentucky, he is the richest man in the world. He is A.R. Price. As the saying goes, it does pay to be rich and A.R. Price has spent some of his money to acquire hired goons while the Mexican American can't help but look on. Goons. That's disrespectful to former men of the military. Even though you have an order to suspend anyone that interferes in the DSW tournament, the Mexican American seems like someone that breaks the rules all the time and wouldn't care if he's suspended. AR Price deserves a good, clean match here. Price is the epitome of what a role model should be, and I for one can't wait to face him at Belly of the Beast. So you think uh, AR Price is gonna win? I don't know. I mean, I sure hope so. It'd be a good match. 
Carol Price is a good wrestler. So I wouldn't be surprised if he win. From your darkest fears, he is the Dark Renegade! That cold stare by the Dark Renegade, unfazing. He has been called the toughest wrestler on the roster. The Dark Renegade has plowed through every opponent in his path on the way to the final match contention here tonight. I'm still not sure what to make of him. I have yet to see a chink in his armor. Because just when you think he's getting to, he's getting beat, he turns around and takes it to his opponents. He's a scary man. And if he wins, I don't think he will. But if he wins, I'm gonna have to step up my game. Because this guy doesn't play around. We have arrived at the main event. Douglas is sitting beside me waiting to see who will win this match and earn the opportunity to face him at Belly of the Beast. I've been waiting for this because both of these men are worthy competitors. They might not beat me, but they will give me a great match at the pay-per-view. In this match, you have the raw power versus intellectual tactician. Normally, I would say that Air Price will steal this match. No pun intended, of course. But the Dark Renegade has come back from taking a beating and just plowed over his opponents. Can the Renegade pass past uh, Price just like he has other opponents? Now, Air Price might be old, but he's no dummy. He will do whatever he can to slow and wear down the Renegade. Uh, to, to plant smart, he needs to attack at a distance because if he gets in the clutches of the Renegade, the Renegade will destroy Price. He needs to be smart. And I guess uh, he has been pretty smart in paying for the guns. I gotta give him to that for keeping his matches clean. No one interfering, but then again, they would have been suspended in the first in the first place there's nothing wrong with a little extra protection because there's always somebody <coughs> the mixed market that will interfere to get even and uh, for no good reason at that well if, if everybody remembers in the first round of the tournament the Mexican American squared up against AR price in which case Bradley Gunn appeared distracted the ref while he tossed a chair into the ring A.R. Price used the chair and used it on the Mexican American, allowing A.R. Price to get past the first round. I never saw that, RG. So I can't say it happened. I never saw it. I mean, I, something got in my eye, and uh, I had to flush it out. Well, so you say, but the tape is there. You can go back and watch it. The Mexican American clearly should have won the match, but A.R. Price is the one that came out on top thanks to a chair. So it's one side as you are, RG. I think that AR Price actually won. The money roll on the Dark Renegade. Is it enough? He hooks the leg. One, two. No. He kicks out and he drop kicks him. He's being smart. He's attacking the Renegade as much as he can, as quickly as he can. The money clip. He gets his finishing maneuver. Hook of the leg. One. No. Only one count. And the Renegade gets right back up. AR Price continued with a drop kick. And I guess the work on the arm. Takes him down. Slam on the arm onto the mat. She's playing the smart. Wearing him down slowly, which is what he needs to do to stay on top. AR Price. Got him up. Suplex. 
Right into a pin. One, two. That's why so many of the wrestlers lose. It's because when they do a fantastic move, they don't go for the pin. AR Price is not that dummy. He will get the, uh, the pin as soon as he sees an opening. He does a good move, catching the Renegade off guard. He's going to go for that pin. Any chance he can get the one, two, three, he's going to take it. That he has, but the tables has turned. And the Renegade is now in charge. Knee to the back. He picks up AR Price. Headlock. Elbow to the face. Jabs. Now AR Price is in the corner. Reversed. Clothesline sends Renegade right down. Just when you think Renegade has the upper hand, AR Price plays it smart, and he gets it. Blocked. Snap suplex by Dark Renegade. Showing no signs of wear or tear. Renegade, knee into the back once again. He, uh, no. AR Price tries to go for a chop. Reverse. Clothesline straight down. That power. Indeed, Renegade has not shown any sense of phase. He's got him up. Uh-oh. Death Valley driver. Is it over? Hook of the leg. One, two, and three. Winner of the match and number one contender, the Dark Renegade. Oh, shit. <laughs> he got that right. Dark Renegade was getting beat majority of this match. He comes back, does a Death Valley driver, and it's all over for AR Price. Oh shit. Douglas is a little uh, phased by that win. Fuck me. All right there, Douglas. Well, Dark Renegade will go on to face. Oh, it's a sad Dark thing. Renegade. Celebrated in here. And AR Price from behind. Here. Yes, with the clothes no. on. No. Renegade. Come on. Fighting Come on, back. Price. He throws him right hey. over there. Right over the top. He blindsided him. Renegade stands tall. That's all the time we have for this episode, folks. Have a good evening. Damn me. Your ass is in trouble.